Welcome everyone. This is your host, Immune to BS. This episode we're going to be talking about the Antikythera mechanism. It's also been referred to as the 2000 year old computer. Now I'd like to give a shout out to the Old Marine One YouTube channel. Uh, he did a little quick video on this subject pointing out that the person that was doing the uh, presentation referred to it as a geocentric device. In other words, that the everything revolves around the Earth and that the Earth is stationary. In other words, a flat Earth or flat plane. Now, I that caught my interest and I decided to take a look at it uh, a little more closely, read up on it. And indeed, it is very interesting uh, device. And I highly recommend that everyone that watches this does some more research. Now, <clears throat> I did find something that's very interesting. This device, in and of itself, does, necess does not necessarily prove uh, the flat Earth, but only that the people or person that created it believe that the earth to be flat having said that uh, it is an extremely complex device and the fact that it can keep track of the lunar phases the sun position the zodiac all in a compact little box is pretty amazing a quick background on this device it was found in 1902 in a wreckage near the island of Antikythera, hence the name, uh, it's, which is in Greece, one of the islands in Greece. Now, one of the leading researchers was professor of history of science at Yale University by the name of Derek DeSola Price, and he published his complete findings, which apparently took over 50 years to compile in 1974, November of 1974. You can buy this book on Amazon for about $20. Around 2004, 2005, we have a new professor show up on the scene by the name of Michael T. Wright basically debunking Professor Price's findings on the device, saying that he got it, quote-unquote, all wrong. So now the question you have to ask is, why would a professor, 30 years later, and, and I think it was because after Professor Price died that they come out with this, why would they come out and start debunking what seemed to be a fairly solid piece of research on the device? And that's where things get interesting. So I'm going to show you now a couple of clips from Professor, uh, Professor Wright on his detailed analysis of why Mr. Price is wrong. I've been called an anachronism before, uh, but I say, uh, if you think that, you've got to adjust your set. Um, this story begins in 1961, when I was a schoolboy, just out of short trousers. Um, and I was learning ancient Greek. My Greek master... Um, thrust this book at me. Um, linear B turned out to be a way of, a non-alphabetic way of writing ancient Greek. It's very old. Uh, but that's not the point. The point is that in the book, you, I read the story of a man called Michael Ventris. I'm not putting myself on his level, but he, as a schoolboy of my age, about 13, 14, had come across this writing as, the, as yet undeciphered, and he had vowed that he'd be the man to decipher it. And as a grown man, he went on to do so. He lived the dream. So, uh, the, for me, this, this was um, 
this was my dream, find my own linear B to unlock, to, to decode. Well, I dreamed on through the rest of school and university and physics and rowing and trumpet playing and women. Um, and I tried to be a schoolmaster and it was no good. Um, and I ended up at a place called the Science Museum, a home for overgrown schoolboys. Um, and um, there I was dealing with engineering. And one day my boss, who didn't have enough work for me to do and liked to get me out of his hair, said, go to the library, you're interested in the ancient world, you're interested in gadgets, uh, there's, um, there's a new publication, go and read it. Um, uh, Derek Price was writing about a thing called the Antikythera mechanism. Uh, and uh, this was his great last word on the subject, and it was wonderful, wow. Had I missed the boat? Was every dream I thought of sort of uh, already fulfilled? Um, uh, but the, his paper puzzled me. It didn't seem I couldn't put it all together. I, was I being stupid? I used to go in awe of professors in those days, um, and that rumbled on in the back of head, background of my mind. So I went on doing my engineering work, um, and oh, that, that's his solution of what it was. Uh, actually, well. Okay, you'll see. It doesn't make sense. Uh, until um, uh, a, ma a man brought this into the museum in his pocket. So Michael Wright is trying to debunk the work of Professor Price by stating that it's just wrong and it doesn't make sense. Doesn't say why, doesn't give examples, nothing. Just says it's wrong. So I think the best way to demonstrate what is happening is to show you some 3D models of Professor Price's device and the one that Michael Wright came up with.
did you see the difference? Let me uh, illustrate it for you a little bit better if you didn't. If we look at the original device created by Professor Price, you'll notice that there's at the top of the mechanism, there is a moon phase and a solar calendar. And those are the only two things that were visible on the front of the original machine. So the solar calendar being underneath. And if you remember at the, on the video, you could actually see the solar arm on the front of the device. Now, looking at Michael Wright's uh, version, uh, all of a sudden he added all the planets. And if you notice the sun has been moved from being part of the moon circuit, sun and moon circuit that is, to being just part of the planets. Mending. But the, um, uh, they, they proposed um, a, lit a little correction, which they said was a huge paradigm shift. Rubbish. Um, the, um, so, and that's where we get to the model on the left. Um, that's the same model slightly modified. We're looking at the back face now because their, their, their uh, alterations concern only the back, really. Um, and um, put it in perspective, this model had taken me overall about a thousand hours to make. It took me one afternoon to make the alterations to fit with what they'd found. Uh, big shift. Um, then they found a little bit more, and hence the 2008 version. You see that we've added an, an extra little feature there. Um, uh, and uh, I made a smarter model, which any of you who's been to Athens recently may have seen on display in the museum there. Uh, so you have to put up with the scruffy first version on the table. Um, never mind who, who, who discovered what. Let's see what it did. Um, it's all worked by turning the knob. Um, and what you see is the planetarium face. Um, see this little feature here, which is the phase of the moon, the little ball rotates. So there's the sun, there's the moon. We're at first quarter, so you see the half moon. Um. As we go to the two opposite in the sky, there's the full moon and round and so on. Meanwhile, look at the other pointers. In a moment, you'll see something zip backwards. OK? Um, and so we go on. If I crank round fast, um, the, the planets all execute retrograde motion at about, in a, about the right style, about the right periods, and so on. Um, now, the, just to mention the back, the back has calendrical information and another calendrical scale, it's in effect a scale of months, which just allows you to predict when there could be an eclipse. It doesn't tell you there will be, but it tells you the possibility of there being an eclipse, which is quite interesting. But it, the, the science is uh, almost boringly dull. It's just a matter of having... Uh, the Babylonians, well before the Greeks, had counted and realised there was a cycle of 223 months, which we now call the Saros, they didn't. Uh, and uh, so it is simply a mechanized calendar counting off 223 months. Um, so as you can see from looking at both faces of the two models, the one with Michael Wright is clearly designed to remove all references of the sun and the moon rotating above the earth. I mean, the, the sheer amount of work that went into adding on to the original design, modifying it, as he clearly states himself. His conception, this is not what was found at the bottom of the ocean in Greece. This is what they're trying to do, is remove all reference of the sun and the moon rotating above the earth. 
Now, the irony of this whole thing is that you and I would probably assume that a device built 2,000 years ago would be built on the assumption that the earth is flat. So, I wouldn't think anything of it by looking at it. But now, with them trying to hide that, it is clearly evident that they are trying to rewrite history. And therefore, the Antikythera mechanism does prove that the Earth is flat because they're trying to rewrite history.